So uh, I'm going to be talking about cross-site scripting. Um, just to give a very high-level overview of it to start off with, um, it's basically another injection vulnerability that has been on OWASP top 10 for how many years? Um, it's severe. It's near the top of that top 10 list. Um, and it's found commonly in web applications um, that range anywhere from uh, a forum site to a blog site that has comments, really anything that allows any sort of user input. Um, it basically allows a user uh, who is with not great intentions to send code through the web application um, that gets executed on all the other users' um, sessions that are, that are uh, using the web app. Um, and this happens when the web apps don't sanitize user input. Uh, they're not doing any sort of encoding or checking for um, uh, input that would be code, um, and it allows it to execute, uh, typically through JavaScript. Um, so, you know, if Bob wants to do some nasty things to all the other users, he can send JavaScript code to allow him to do that um, if there is no sanitization. So, um, okay. Uh, so this is kind of a diagram of how cross-site scripting works in a specific way, um, but just to kind of go through it, you have your attacker um, who's using a web app and discovers that uh, he, can, he or she can uh, put input into this web app um, and execute code. Um, like I said, typically through JavaScript, and so they are able to inject their JavaScript and um, they see that it runs, uh, they verify it usually with an alert box, which we'll take a look at. Um, and one of the nasty things that we'll, we'll look at a little bit is that you can steal uh, session cookies. And these session cookies can allow you to sometimes um, pose as the user, so take over their session and act as them. Um, you can think about the implications of that, whether that be banking um, or uh, social media, um, posing as another user by stealing their cookies. So they inject the code, goes through the website, and then for every user that visits that, um, that code runs and allows the attacker to take that cookie from the other user. And typically, that's, you do not want to do that on any sort of web app that has personal information um, or you know, um, something that that person owns that they don't want other people to see. So here's an example, um, one of the most basic ones, but uh, so think that you're on like a blog site that allows some sort of comment system. Um, and so, for example, we'll be using like PHP for our application. So this box contains the backend code. Um, as you can see, we're printing some lines of HTML. We start our HTML, and let's say this is like the comment page, um, and we're printing out the re most recent comment. So what we're doing is calling a function here um, using the database to get the, the most recent comment, and we're printing that out, and then we end our HTML. So um, this is what it would look like on the blog post that the attacker would see. Uh, they can um, submit a comment here on another page, or maybe even the same page, um, and what they're doing is they're actually inputting a script tag uh, with JavaScript within it, um, now, a normal user would just post their comment, hit submit comment, and it'd show up on this page. However, since this is JavaScript, and this alert here um, basically comes up with an alert box. Uh, you guys might have seen this when you're browsing the web, um, just a box with OK. Um, and then they submit the comment. So what happens is this gets stored in the database, so it's a uh, store type of cross-site scripting. And then uh, what happens is the web app pulls this from the database as it's persistent, it's stored in the database, and then prints it out. Well, it's not doing any user san um, sanitation, so what it's doing is it's actually printing out the HTML or JavaScript um, that is contained within the HTML script tag, and it's actually executing that JavaScript. So this is a really easy way that an attacker can tell that uh, this web app is vulnerable to cross-site scripting. Um, and so if we view the source of this page after we do this, after um, we hit submit comment, we go to the most recent comments page, we can actually see that this is being printed out in the page source, okay? Does that make sense? Does anybody have questions with this first example? Okay. Okay, so a pop-up box, great. We can make all the users look at a message that we sent. Uh, we could already do that with the comment system. So how is that really useful for us? Um, you know, besides being a vector for social engineering, um, 
it, you know, it's, it, it's more annoying than it is malicious. However, there, it's a, basically a proof of concept um, to show that cross-site scripting does exist on that web app. So um, to do more nasty things, you could come up with uh, j any sort of JavaScript code um, would be able to execute on that. So you could go that route of thinking of other different ways. Um, but there's also something I wanted to hit on called uh, DOM-based XSS. XSS. So DOM stands for Document Object Model. Um, and it's basically a interface to program with um, web browsers and the web. Um, and it re represents a page and all the different things that are involved in a web page as nodes and objects. Here I have an example um, from some code that I wrote to change the color of the page. Um, now normally you could do this with CSS, however, when I use JavaScript, I can actually change um, <coughs> the color of the page every second or so, um, so you can have it flashing. But for example, we access uh, the document object model by saying document, and then we have uh, nodes that are associated with our document, such as body, and then we can start styling stuff like the background color and using like CSS-like stuff um, through the document object model. So knowing that, this is gonna help us to um, do some more malicious attacks. So now imagine you're on a forum, um, legithackerforum.com, probably not a real thing, um, but you're on your favorite form, and let's say you have a page that allows you to select all the posts in like a drop-down box, and if you hit submit, it'll load that post for you. Um, <clears throat> so going back to DOM, uh, the cookies, uh, like session cookies, any other cookies that um, the uh, web application programmers have assigned to you are accessible via the document object model. And some of these apps are um, not the brightest in the way they set up their cookies, um, where they can store very confidential information, um, such as uh, you know, like your username, even your password, uh, if they're really stupid, and just, just stuff that you wouldn't want an attacker to have. And like I said, they can do kind of that replay attack where they're posing as you if they can um, get your cookies and establish a session using those. So if we can get those cookies, then we can kind of pose as, as users if the cookies are set up that way. So we can, um, like I said, we're using a form. We have uh, a drop-down menu here um, that allows us to select a post. And when we hit, um, you know, OK, it shows that post in the web page. Well, if we look at the URL um, that this is creating, or the URI, um, it's actually using a parameter within the URL um, called uh, post underscore ID. Now, if we had selected um, Bob's post from two weeks ago, maybe his post ID was assigned to number 10065 or something like that, and that's what would show up in our web browser. However, um, again, not sanitizing input, what we can do is actually inject uh, JavaScript into here. So um, it's kind of cut off because it was a bit long, but you can see that I start with script, and then I'm accessing the document object model um, and then I'm using the location uh, object. And so what this does is it returns the URL that the page is currently on. And so what I do now is, let's say I own this domain or IP or wherever this is pointing to, so I own badsite.ru, I'm now running a web server um, that's looking for uh, this parameter on my PHP page, so steal. Whatever I assign to that, I'm gonna collect. So if anybody makes a request to my web app, um, using this format, I'm basically gonna grab whatever is under the steel parameter and store that for my own use. So what I'm doing here is I uh, open document.location, I set that to my bad uh, web server um, using my cookie stealer page, and then what I'm doing is I'm accessing the cookie um, that is currently on the forum, and I'm sending that to myself, to my bad website, okay? And then I finish it off with the script tag, and now this is JavaScript. So now document object model uh, based cross-site scripting is a bit different than what we just looked at with the blog post. You would have to send this URL or get somebody to click on it for it to work. So whether I do a phishing attack in an email and I send this, and let's say I only include like this part of the URL, um, and then the actual link is, is uh, hidden within the text, um, so that's why it's always good in emails to hover your mouse over the text uh, links in an email to make sure that the actual URI is the same as what's being displayed. Otherwise, you might be in for some sort of phishing attack. 
So I can put this in, um, cover it up, and send it to a, a, a massive emailing list and try to get people to click on this so that I can steal their cookies. Now you can imagine this might be worse um, <coughs> if it's facebook.com or google.com, um, and we'll talk about it later, but google.com actually has had and is currently um, doing bug bounties for cross-site scripting. So it's, it's a really big deal, um, even within the big organizations. Um, does anybody have questions about the DOM-based cross-site scripting? Anything not make sense with that? So again, it's, it's a URL that you have to get somebody to click on. This isn't something um, that you can store within the web app. Okay, so how do we make cross-site scripting happen in the real world? How do we find it? There are some requirements, um, such as a web application that doesn't sanitize user input. Hint, hint, fi to fix this problem, we can sanitize user input. Um, it needs to have users. If you're gonna attack a web application that nobody uses, you're not gonna get that much data or valuable data, so what's the point? And then again, like I said, it's kind of repeated, but unsanitized user input. So if they encode or sanitize this user input, we can't make use of cross-site scripting. Um, and so now I'm just going to do a quick live demo here um, using something called uh, damn vulnerable web app. So I've talked about this, uh, I think last year in ISG. If you haven't heard of, has anyone heard of damn vulnerable web app? Okay, a couple of you. Um, if you haven't heard of it, it's basically a, I think mostly a PHP application um, that is vulnerable to all types of different web application attacks. Um, so you should definitely check that out. Um, if you go on Vulnhub, there's actually a dot, or dot, there's actually an ISO that you can download um, and just load it right up into VMware, which I will show right now. Um, and then you'll be able to access that. So let's take a look at uh, damn vulnerable web app. And obviously, if you're gonna host this, don't host it publicly because it's full of holes. So don't put it on your uh, public network or anything like that. Um, okay. Let me just pull this over here. Okay, so once we get our box going, I just have it running in VMware locally. Um, so now the default login for damn vulnerable web app is admin password. Um, and here under the security tab, um, we can set the type of security. I've got it on low for now, um, just so we can demonstrate some of the injection capabilities. Um, but if we go to reflected, we basically see what we had on the blog post. So user input, and we can submit it. Now, if we just put something in um, and hit submit, we can see that it's basically echoing what we submit. So if I try to execute um, some sort of JavaScript, all right, sorry to get it in there, sweet. Um, I can't type. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, again, this is basically what we saw in the presentation. If I hit submit, I get that pop-up. Now, this is basically me verifying that this web page is vulnerable to cross-site scripting. So if I wanted to, um, I could put really anything, uh, any sort of um, JavaScript I wanted to uh, into this box, hit submit, and the web server's gonna run that uh, code. Um, that I wanted to execute. So um, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about damn vulnerable web app, but again, you can see that um, there's a bunch of different things you can practice with, like SQL injection, which we've talked about, um, brute force attacks uh, for logins and stuff like that, um, cross-site uh, request forgery. So um, definitely check this app out. Uh, it's, it's a great learning tool, um, and if you have any questions, you can ask me. Um, in terms of getting it set up or anything like that. Okay, so moving back to the presentation. Um, so how do we fix the problem of cross-site scripting? Um, uh, the, the easy and quick solution is to encode all input, and that is uh, not only JavaScript, but HTML as well. Um, and for example, what I've done here is um, I've used the document object model again here, um, and I'm writing to the page um, just this JavaScript here. So say this, uh, sorry, uh, HTML. So say this is user input. You can see down here, um, it's making this a, um, a header here uh, and actually rendering that HTML. So clearly this is getting put into the source code, not good. If we use the escape function, um, what it's doing is converting specific characters, um, such as uh, slashes, and it'll do semicolons and stuff. Um, it's encoding that, and so now this 
uh, HTML source is not getting rendered in the page, it's being rendered uh, as it's encoded, as it's escaped. Um, and so this basically makes cross-site scripting useless in this use case. Um, another thing, uh, kind of going along the same lines as trying to do it yourself, checking inputs yourself, so seeing if there's um, any interesting symbols uh, that you don't like and denying user input that way. Um, this is more of the manual way of doing it uh, and could be possibly flawed as you may miss something or an attacker could find their way around um, your restrictions. So if you want to look more into this, uh, there's a number of things that you can do in terms of practicing cross-site scripting. Um, this presentation will be on the past uh, presentations folder. Um, Google actually has a really cool web application that allows you to practice this with multiple different uh, levels. Um, so I would check that out. The link is in here. Um, it's something like apps spot or something. Um, but yeah, the link will be in the presentation. Um, this is cool because it, there's different hints and the levels get harder as you continue. Um, so you can practice uh, increasing uh, steps of, of cross-site scripting um, and also have hints if you get stuck. So it's pretty cool. And then again, just like we looked at, the damn vulnerable web app uh, is vulnerable to just about every uh, web attack out there. Um, so again, great, great tool to practice that. Does anybody have any questions regarding that? No? Okay. Um, kind of flew through that, but yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it for this week. Um, again, next week we won't have a meeting. It's spring break, so hope you guys have a good break. And then we'll be here back after spring break. So, thank you. <coughs>